All right, what's happening, guys? Jesse here. It's been a while since I last posted, and the reason being is because I've been deep in the weeds researching different investment opportunities. And today I'm really keen and excited to bring you guys two stocks that I will be buying in August. Uh, well, actually, I've already bought these two stocks, and so, you know, obviously I've been putting together my research and putting it in a video, hence there's a little bit of a delay. But I'm, I'm really bullish on these two stocks. And so in today's video, what I really wanted to do is to bring you some different economic data and also financial data in regards to why I believe these two stocks uh, have a lot of potential to gain, you know, 40, 50, 60 percent gains in the next two to three quarters. OK, so the, the, this is the sort of returns that I'm targeting for these two stocks. And so in order to start with some economic data before I get into these two companies, uh, what they do, what they are, and what they're trading at. I just wanted to share with you guys the latest data from the uh, Census Bureau. Okay, so this is the latest retail data, and as you guys can see, uh, the 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 retail and consumer discretionaries have continued to recover, and uh, there's a lot of demand. Okay, so there's a lot of pent up demand. People have a lot more money from the last round of stimulus. And then as a result of the next round of stimulus, again, people will continue to have money. And then these will be good for the two stocks that I'm covering, okay? And the, the ones that I've highlighted is retail sales less auto. That has beat the guidance, uh, sorry, that has beat consensus estimates and are up significantly from last year. And also non-store retailers being significantly up, okay? And so any company with a good uh, e-commerce or omni-channel capability will benefit from both of these. And so that leads me to the first company that I wanted to bring you guys today, which is the Children's Place, okay? So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Children's Place, this is a specialty retailer for, uh, you know, sort of kids, uh, I'd say from three, four, above to, you know, sort of your early teens, okay? And so this is America's largest uh, chain of specialty retailers, and they've also expanded into places like Canada and have some good distribution partners in Europe. If you have a look at them compared to their competitor, Carter's, okay, you guys can see that Carter's is only down sort of, you know, 27% year to date, whereas Children's Place is down, you know, over 60 odd percent, okay? And I'm going to share with you guys some more data why this doesn't make sense and why I believe the market is falling asleep uh, at the wheel on children's place okay so the first reason is you know versus their closest competitor it's not even close they're down way more and they've got a good business and i don't think should they should be down as much okay furthermore if you have a look at the guidance now i've taken two screenshots for you guys in terms of the uh not the guidance sorry the earnings estimates so this is wall street's estimates for their revenue for the next quarter and the remainder of the year, okay? So the first screenshot is the estimates from sort of a couple of weeks ago, and then this is the updated estimates. So as you guys can see, sentiment is very, very negative, and Wall Street has actually revised down their numbers for the children's place, which again, I believe is a mistake. And the reason being is because if you have a look at some of this economic data, okay? So this data I'm gonna share with you is from NPR, and this is, you know, surveying uh, multiple different consumers in terms of their spending in regards to back to school and for their kids. So 93% of people surveyed, uh, you know, plan to buy some clothing for kids going back to school. Now, if we compare the estimates, Wall Street has Children's Place, you know, going down 15% the next quarter and 7% the quarter after that. But if you look at it over here, you know, the, the forecast for people spending on children's clothing, that's only going to decline 2%, okay? And that's the industry overall. And obviously, within the industry, they're going to be winners and losers. And I think that the children's place is going to be a massive winner, right? The estimates are saying it's going to drop, you know, almost 15%, whereas people are only going to spend 2% less. So that should result in a beat, okay? And you guys always know that whenever I see a company beat and they give good guidance, the share price always goes up, okay? So the reason, first reason why I think Children's Place will do well. Secondly, if you actually have a look at the age demographics of the people that are going to be spending, you'll notice that the three largest spending demographics on clothing excluding shoes are the 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and 65 plus. And again, this is good for Children's Place because the kids that they sell to will be within the age range of young parents between 25 to 34, and then parents with sort of your mid-teens going on to sort of, 
you know, that K-12 school year, again, 35 to 44, and then the 65 plus will be grandparents buying for their grandchildren, again, within the same age range. Okay, so the three largest spends, spending uh, cohorts within clothing and accessories, you know, this is, again, good for children's place, okay? Furthermore, if you actually have a look at the data, now, if you look back to the previous slide, you'll notice that the average amount spent per household has only gone down 2%, but the actual total spending forecasted for the category is going to go up in excess of 11 or 12 percent. So what that means is the breadth of participation is actually getting larger. So people who didn't spend last year will spend this year because of X and Y reasons. Maybe it's stimulus, maybe it's pent up demand, who knows, okay guys? But the data shows me that Wall Street forecasting, you know, the children's place going down 14, 15 percent, it really just does not uh, reflect the reality of uh, the reality of how the numbers are going to play out. So I think that that's going to lead to them easily beating the next one to two quarters in terms of the revenue and EPS. Okay, uh, and this slide is from the latest investor presentation. You guys can actually see that their e-commerce and digital demand has shot through the roof. Okay, so as you can see here, three twenty nine percent, five fifty seven percent. Look, it sort of averages out at about two fifty three hundred percent. Okay. And for a business that has e-commerce, which is, you know, going on 50 plus percent of their business with such an increase, again, it just does not reflect why, you know, I, I, I just don't understand why Wall Street has them going down 15 percent, okay, when the data is clearly proving the opposite. Now, if you guys actually have a look at some of the extracts from the latest earnings call, and I won't read you the whole passage of text, but I just wanted to focus on some key things, okay? So, online demand is up 300%. And quarter to date, all of their sales are running at a positive low double digits. And keep in mind that this is with 95% of their stores closed. This means that the online and digital demand has increased so materially that it's actually offset the closed stores to bring in their sales running up up a low double digit percentage versus last year okay and that's massive the second thing i wanted us to focus on is during the gfc when times are bad their combined period they still achieved low single digit comp sales okay guys now and again if we think back to wall street negative 15 percent revenue versus you know up positive low double digits and then up low singles during the gfc it just really, really does not make sense. Okay, guys, and so that's another reason why I think these guys are going to easily beat their guidance and the estimates, okay? This company is aggressively aiming to close their physical footprint, okay? So they're closing their retail stores. And despite that, they maintain, the management team maintain that they can continue to grow revenues whilst operating at, you know, say 50% less stores than what they were three or four years ago. For those of you who are familiar with operating leverage, that's going to go directly into the bottom line. Again, that's massive. And so I couldn't get the whole two-year web traffic to show you what it was compared to 2019 and 2018. But what I can say is that this significant increase in web traffic corroborates with what management says about their increase in digital demand, their increase in e-commerce, but also it corroborates with the other data that I showed you in regards to you know the graphs with people uh, obviously, with the average household spending going down a little bit, but the breadth of participation going up significantly. Okay, guys? So I think that these are all tailwinds for Children's Place. And as you guys can see, if we add together Children's Place and Gymboree, which is their uh, other brand, and you compare that with Carter's, which is their closest competitor, you can see that their web traffic is almost double what Carter's is over the last quarter. So if we think back to what we saw before, where Carter's is only down 27%, um, but Children's Place is down over 60%, you know, I just think that this is going to cause for a good re-rate uh, at the next earnings call, where people see that things are actually a lot better than what Wall Street thinks. I'm actually starting to see many similar qualities between Children's Place and Lululemon in terms of just how well they are able to engage their customer demographic uh, through the e-commerce channel, through the omni-channeling, through their website, through their app, okay guys? So, summarizing all of this and all of the data, I just do not see 
them declining 15% in revenues next quarter and then 7% 7 the quarter after that, okay? I think it's probably going to come in closer to flat the next quarter and slightly up the quarters after that. So this is the reason why uh, I'm bullish and my catalyst date will be September the 10th, which is an upcoming earnings call where I believe that they're going to significantly outperform both the revenue and EPS estimates. Okay, guys? And so what I've done is I've bought two tranches of Children's Place. I'm targeting around sort of a, 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 a 40, 50, 60% return within the next two to three quarters. All right, guys, and before we get on to the next stock, just a quick shout out to my broker, Hatch. Uh, and again, guys, if you haven't already and you're investing from NZ and you haven't signed up for Hatch, you know, sign up get great three dollar brokerage per trade and uh, you know a really good exchange rate when you exchange your kiwi dollars into the usd and uh, if you deposit your first hundred dollars you get ten dollars free credit by using the link below which i'll include um and uh you know as always guys this is uh not financial advice this is just purely my opinion and my research all right guys but uh, yeah if you haven't already sign up for hatch fantastic brokerage and uh you know my favorite brokers in the nz Okay, guys, so the second stock that we're going to cover is the company called Funco, okay? And so, in short, you guys might be wondering, what are they doing, and uh, what do they make, who do they target? And so, uh, just a bit of history, these guys started off making the big bobblehead dolls that would sit in, you know, at the front of your car, and they would wobble. And then throughout the course of time, they've uh, signed up a lot of different partnerships with a lot of different companies, where they've now started to sell what you can effectively call as nostalgia. So what they do, guys, is they license the right to basically make little toy replicas with oversized heads and little bodies of anything that you can consider as pop culture, okay, guys? And when I say anything, I mean literally anything. And so, you know, obviously, if, if, uh, if that's the case and people have been at home binge-watching Netflix or you know, Hulu or Disney or whatever you like to call it, or, you know, they've been binge playing video games, or they've been doing both, then obviously Funko is going to be a beneficiary of the stay-at-home, lockdown time, binge watch, binge play, binge consumption of content, or video games, or both, okay guys? And so, you know, as a result, you guys can see just how much tailwind there is for Funko, okay? So they can literally make little toy replicas of anything, right? We're talking Disney, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, The Mandalorian, you know, popular cartoons, popular bands, popular sports, you know? Literally, if people will watch it and play it, you can get a little toy replica on it, okay? So I think that these things are going to be front of mind for everybody, you know, because obviously the lockdowns have been extended depending on what country you are in or there's a second wave people are going to be working from home okay they're going, they're going to be going out less and uh, they, they're going to be you know obviously online watching or playing and, and everything okay so this is going to bring the awareness to, to the top of everybody's minds who consume this content and play these video games and so if you guys have a look at Funko's top properties for the most recent quarter you'll realize that you know what do you know right it's either what people have been watching or what people have been playing or both. So I think that there's going to be another at least two to three, four quarters of tailwinds until we can, I guess, get a get, get, get confidence on a vaccine that actually works and then people start to leave their houses and spend more time outside. Okay, guys? Now, I've circled here Evergreen Properties. And as you guys can see over here, Evergreen Properties that accounted for two-thirds of Funko sales in uh, the second quarter of 2020, okay? And so effectively what that means is the majority of what they sell aren't actually tied to a particular event. So for example, you know, the latest Game of Thrones, okay? Or aren't tied to a particular movie. But it's just that these things continue to remain in the hearts and minds of people because what we saw before is it's nostalgia. But on top of that, if we then have a look at the actual Google Trends breakout searches, you'll actually see that, you know, people are buying evergreen stuff, but they're also binge watching, you know, manga or Netflix or binge playing video games, and they're going out there and buying, you know, stuff that they watched to, again, you know, purchase that little bit of nostalgia. So as you guys can see over here, Stranger Things, obviously a popular show. Fortnite, a popular game, Baby Yoda, part of the Mandalorian, 
Overwatch, uh, you know, popular game, My Hero Academia, etc., etc. Okay, and so these Google breakup trends, you know, it effectively means that there's a tremendous increase in searches for these things, which show, you know, which obviously corroborates with the more people are consuming, the more they're searching, and then the more they're going to obviously buy stuff like the little dolls that Funko makes. And if you actually have a look at the related topics, as you guys can see over here. It, it pretty much correlates perfectly with what people are watching and what people are playing and then they're obviously going online or you know going out now that the retail stores are opening to purchase these things and then if we compare the google trends you can see that uh, in july sort of june may july you'll see that the interest within the funko dolls are actually as high or even higher than what it was last christmas which was you know the all-time high and so what we can see is throughout the course of time, people have gotten more interested in Funko little dolls and uh, the interest is only growing and then the lockdowns of content consumption has actually uh, given that an even bigger boost. What I did was I followed some of the influences within this sort of area, okay? So, uh, you know, people on YouTube that have between 10 to 20, 30, 40,000 uh, subscribers in this case, Top Pops, he's got about 200,000 plus subscribers. And, uh, you know, I just really wanted to track that if the if the interest is actually converting to demand for, for the products that Funko have. And as you guys can see over here, uh, you know, the, the there was so much demand on their website that it effectively broke the page almost. Um, and, and they actually had to make people queue up digitally in terms of trying to get their place to get these dolls, okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, but... I can't remember the last time that I visited a website and I've had this message saying that you have to queue up on the website so that you can go and order a product, okay? So if that's not, you know, a good sign of uh, very, very strong demand, then I don't know what is. The web traffic, again, has significantly increased. In fact, the number of visits are up almost 30% and the average visit duration is up, on, you know, over 30%. So again, what that tells me is people are binge watching, binge consuming, and then it's front of mind for them, and then obviously they're going to want to spend, okay? And in this case, they're going to come to Funko's site and buy these little dollars. The direct traffic has gone up, but the actual search traffic has gone up even more so than the direct traffic. So what this actually tells me is that, you know, you've got repeat customers, but then new people are also discovering Funko uh, you know, obviously because they've, they've got more time, uh, they, they perhaps might have been able to pick up another hobby like collecting, okay guys? And so, you know, again, that's another reason why I think that there's some really good tailwinds for this company and uh, I can't see them not doing well over at least the next two to three quarters. And then just a little bit of extra data for you guys, as you can see over here, this is uh, one of their, the, the other collectible stores, okay? So the first piece of data that I showed you was through Funko's actual own store. This is uh, another collectible store which sells little Funko dolls and other things that people can collect. And uh, as you guys can see over here, the web traffic for them is up and it's at all time highs as well, you know, along with both uh, direct traffic but also organic search traffic. And again, guys, this just shows me that there is strong demand all round and interest all round, uh, you know, for, for obviously. Funko and Funko things related. They were up in terms of retail comps at one of their mass channel partners year over year. Uh, you know, and, and I have a suspicion that it's probably either Target or Walmart or something along the lines of that who uh, weren't closed during the lockdown. The average price of their products is about $8, okay? And um, if you guys have been watching my channel and my previous videos, you'll know that I am uh, bullish on discretionaries uh, that don't cost very much. So little indulgences, because I think that, you know, when times are hard, people are still going to want to indulge, but they're going to want to indulge in smaller quantities rather than buy big ticket items. So guys, their next earnings call is on the 4th of November. And uh, based on the data that I've shown you, I'm expecting a good beat from, uh, from, from management, okay? And the reason being is because management has a very, very solid track record of uh, outperforming their own estimates. So as you guys can see over here, their most recent quarter, which is uh, the one that was, you know, uh, basically at the heaviest during the lockdown, Wall Street had them declining about sort of 60, 65% of the revenues, and they only declined 49% of revenue. So that was a massive beat, all right, guys? Um, and, and so you had a couple of little anomalies over here, 
and the reason being was because the you know obviously that was when the lockdown first started and then December last year was because they had um, overproduced certain items and they had to actually write that off okay guys so that was a bit of an execution error but generally throughout you know when Funko started trading publicly you guys can actually see over here that management do have a consistent track record of being conservative with their guidance and then over delivering on that okay so again under promise over deliver the share price is going to go up I'm bullish on a few things okay I'm bullish on the reopening I'm bullish on the fact that the stimulus will mean more people will want to spend I'm bullish on the fact that because people have been locked down so long there's a lot of pent-up demand and then I'm also bullish on the fact that uh, people are binge watching and consuming content which are then making them more eager to uh, you know buy these nostalgic pieces of uh, of uh, uh, consumer consumables all right guys uh, that's the end of the video hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to smash that like button leave a comment subscribe share the video uh, till next time happy investing